hello, 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 and welcome to the Danielle Mercurio Show. I changed my mind. You know, I was rolling with my so-called spiritual life during Mercury retrograde, and it was exactly what I needed during that time. I was in a very transitional place in my life where I was questioning a lot, but really I just needed to to be in the surrender of the fact that I was healing a lot. And oftentimes when we're in a space of deep, necessary healing and release, we're not inspired. We're not motivated. We're questioning a lot of things. And for me, I didn't feel comfortable, and it makes sense now, while deep in my healing space to fully show up as Danielle Mercurio, because here's the thing, I couldn't. I couldn't fully show up as Danielle Mercurio, as the Danielle Mercurio show during the June Mercury retrograde. I needed my so-called spiritual life. I needed that outlet. I needed to just change things up for a little bit because what some of the work that I was doing internally was around my confidence in fully being authentically Danielle Mercurio. And I've noticed a pattern in my life where sometimes, as much as I preach and want everyone to be more confident, I notice that there's a pattern as soon as something shakes me, as soon as something, you know, contrasts what I want to do, what I'm here for, what I'm showing up as, as soon as someone says, no, you can't do that, I go to a place of, oh, if I can't do that, let me find something else that's safer. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't want to do that anymore. I'm over it. I'm over trying to meet everybody where they're at because it's impossible. And the person that suffers the most from that is me. And so I fully take pride in everything I've done. I have no regrets out of any of my work, any of my teachings. I never feel like there's been a point where I'm like, whoa, what you did was like, not okay. If anything, I feel like in some ways, while it's all been great, it's been a little small. It's been a little hidden. It's been a little like, everyone, is this okay with you? Where we have to realize in our life, like we can't lead with that energy. Even if we lead confidently, if there's still question marks behind what we're doing, it's never going to fully actualize in a way that feels good to us. And if it doesn't fully feel good to us, if we're fully questioning it, guess what? It's not going to feel fully good for other people. And they might start questioning it too. So what I really wanted to showcase in kind of coming back around with Daniel Mercurio show, which was my intent. I think I just needed, you know, again, I just, I couldn't be Daniel Mercurio <laughs> earlier this summer. Um, but I want to kind of share this idea of it's okay to change your mind. Here's the thing. As much as I can say like, oh, this is why I did this, this is why I did that. It also doesn't matter because part of our growth, part of our evolution means change. And if we don't embrace change, if we don't get really familiar and intimate with that process, then we are going to be victims to being stuck, to doing the same things on repeat, to welcoming the same patterns, to doing the same things over and over again and questioning why. You know, um, we were all given free will. And the beautiful thing about free will is that it can work in your favor. And it can work in your favor in the space of you can freely and willingly decide to change and pivot at any moment. However, the reasons why often we don't change, we don't do things that are different is because of security, right? Even though we might not like how things are, we know what things are. There's a security around it. There's a sense of, I'm going to be okay if I stay in this. I may not like it, but I'm going to be okay. And if I change, I might not be okay. I might not be secure. I might not be comfortable. And so oftentimes that holds us back. It also holds us back because we have a fear of how do I even explain this to other people? How many of you are big into the justification game? Oh, this is why I'm doing this. Someone asks you a question, you have to justify. Uh, Someone asks you what you're doing and you have to explain so it makes sense. Let's knock that out. 
Let's stop justifying for our life. Let's stop justifying our decisions. Let's get into that place of this is what I want to do now. Okay, cool. You know, can we normalize the, fi- the, the fact that our world is changing left and right, day in and day out? So you can be a part of these changes. Just because the world is kind of in this upside down place doesn't mean that you have to stay paralyzed and stuck and wait to see what happens. Let's stop waiting to see what happens and embracing what opportunities are available to you now. You know, we got to release the fact that, you know, if we change, people are going to leave, um, resources are going to go away, all these different dynamics. Whereas change is your inherent right. Change is part of what you came here to do. Change is inevitable. Our bodies change. You know, my body looks very different than it did 30 years ago. Hmm. And we can't stop that. So why do we put parameters around the capacity of our life? Why do we try to downsize it when really it's meant to grow just like our physical bodies? We have to start to take ownership of the the fact that if there's something else you want to do, you want to explore that. And of course, there's always the fear fear of failure that comes with change. You know, you can make a change and be like, whoop, that didn't work. And then we go into a space of rejection. We go to the space of, oh, like I shouldn't have done that. As opposed to honoring yourself to be like, I tried that out. I gave it a chance. And part of my growth that's going to come from this is because of that moment. So we can say that moment was a failure. But in the big picture, when we look at the absolute, when we look at your ability to grow and get more evolved, that quote unquote failure was actually a key piece to all of it. What if the changes that didn't work out were actually what got you to where you ultimately want to be? What if the changes in your life that you went for but didn't work out eventually led you to where you want to be? Would it be worth it? Yes. Would it suck for a moment? Absolutely. And I've experienced that myself. I left Philadelphia. I moved to Philadelphia in the the fall of 2017, and I left New Year's Day 2021. And I had this idea in my head that I wanted to find, you know, a new place to live. I love staying in Airbnbs and trying out different places. And I just kind of wanted a change of pace, change of scenery. I was feeling a little bit stifled where I was living. I wasn't feeling comfortable. It was noisy. I had an inappropriate neighbor. It was just not a good fit for me anymore. So I knew that. And of course, there was a part of me that was like, maybe I should just stay and wait it out and see what happens. But that's not being the change. That's not honoring the parts of me that were suffering, the parts of me that were so tired and anxious and um, feeling stifled. So I made the change and I hit the road. And I set up in Asheville for a few weeks and I just kept going. And I had in the back of my mind this idea that Texas was going to be my place. Now I kind of laugh because here we are like six months later and I'm like, no, (laughs) just kidding. Um, I really had this good feeling about Austin. I thought it was going to be a great fit for me. I thought that that's where, you know, I could kind of set up shop for the next phase of my life. And again, part of why I wanted to do this journey on the road, though, was to not permanently move anywhere, like not to be like, okay, I'm in Philly and now I'm going to go to Austin or I'm in Philly and now, you know, St. Pete was another place that I had in mind. Um, I needed to be on the road, be in different environments and be in change very frequently to really get to the root of what I needed to let go of and also what ultimately would be the best fit for me. And there were a lot of things that came up while I was on the road. I realized that Texas was not a good fit for me. I mean, I wound up arriving during a freaking ice storm. Um, The hotel I was staying in completely lost power and plumbing. It was zero degrees at night. I was there for three nights um, because you might say, why wouldn't you leave? Well, there was no internet. The highways were shut down. The, you know, the roads were not equipped for any kind of driving. I was literally trapped, right? Get... Um, I mean, I was pooping in a cup, if you want to really know what was going on. So there was that situation. And then taking it out like a freaking dog. And I stole the doggy bags that were like 
in the parking lot for myself so that I could go to the bathroom. Um, so that was my first experience of Texas. I was on my moon line, which was really interesting. Moon line is a place where we need to connect more with our feminine to release, to surrender, to be supported. And I really had to be in that time. I literally had no choice. I had to lean on my sister. She's in the hospitality and I was able to make phone calls from a, from a certain spot. So she was, you know, helping me trying to figure out where I could go, um, you know, calling friends when they had time just to chat with me because I, I, you know, was, um, in a space where I was really scared and also like time moves in interesting ways when you're in those situations. And then, you know, once I got to, I went up winding up in college station, Texas, um, for a night until I could make it to, or maybe two nights until I could make it to Austin. My Airbnb was open early. Great. Wonderful. And as soon as I get there, I fall, get a concussion, break my foot. Now I'm on bed rest for two weeks in a boot for almost six weeks in a town I've never been where I thought, yeah, maybe I'll live here one day, which I surely, you know, realized just once I was integrating that it wasn't my home and that I changed my mind. And that was okay. It was okay that I told people that I might want to live here one day and then decided not to. It was okay that I gave it a try and I really thought it had a lot of potential and it was going to be the best fit for me. And it was one that actually knocked me out entirely instead. And, and that's okay. And I just kept going, you know, I just kept moving on the road and I kept, you know, embracing what every environment wanted to give me, what perspective I wanted to gain from it while also releasing external expectation and validation. I found that the more that I released any idea of living somewhere and being in someone else's environment, you know, a, 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 an environment curated by a collective, the more I leaned on my own self. And that was really scary at times to, to be the sole provider, the sole guidance, the sole intuitive knowing for what I needed to do. And sometimes I got it right. And sometimes I didn't, because as I went in and out of this journey, there were definitely moments, even post Texas, where I was like, nope, shouldn't have done that. Nope, didn't listen to my intuition here. Nope, don't feel so great about this. And there were times where I left places early, I redirected because I needed to. It, and and I, I want you to question in your life, where is there an area that needs redirection that you're ignoring? What is it that's going on currently that you need to change and you're not? Because I will say, sometimes making a change is messy. But I do believe that the messier it is sometimes, the better it's going to get. If there's a really big mess that ensues from the change that you're making, then clearly that was a reflection of something that you were holding on to that was a big mess living inside of you. And by making that choice to make a change, you release the mess. And while it's not fun, to have to clean it up and be like, look at this fucking mess I made. Blah. You clean it up. And then once you clean it up, you have all of this space. And from that space, it doesn't automatically mean the answers will appear. But you can make a choice in this new space. I choose to keep this space. I choose to fill it with peace. I choose to fill it with joy. I choose to fill it with love. And when I get used to that, because that takes a while. It takes a while to get used to changes that we make that actually are in our favor. Sometimes it can be weird to accept these new things. You ever been dating someone and you weren't sure how you felt about them and they were really into you and they were supporting you and they were giving you everything you needed and asked for. And yet there was a party that was like, this is weird. This is awkward. They're too nice. They're too this. But once you got used to it, once you really settled in and received it, we are like, this is the best thing ever. I'm so glad I have this in my life. So it's okay if you're a little scared of change. And it's okay that once a change ensues or happens, you resist it a little bit. That's your way of readjusting and recalibrating. And, and I want you to realize that we can change our mind as much as we want. Now, of course, we want to use discernment. You know, for me, I'm very mindful, especially when I set out in January that I wasn't running away. 
I wasn't just being like, life is hard. I don't like Philly anymore. I'm running away. You know, it wasn't that. It was, I am complete with this situation, with this environment. For right now, I may change my mind and and move back to Philly, but I felt very complete. And from that space of feeling complete, I stepped into something new. And so when you're getting ready to make a change, ask yourself, do I feel complete? At least like 85% complete. You know, there's always going to be that lingering, like, I don't know, which is okay. Do I feel 85% complete with this choice? Am I running away or am I stepping away? Am I honoring my need to evolve? You know, uh, I'd say a sign that we can look to for guidance in this is Gemini. Gemini gets a bad rap because it's the, the twins. People say it's multiple personalities that are all over the place. And I'm like, no, like when we look at it, Gemini from an embodied perspective, we actually see a sign that is here for change, that constantly needs more, that is always curious, that is always moving into the next thing. And for that, I have a lot of respect that, you know, Geminis can do a lot of different things. Historically, if you look up some Geminis, you'll see that like there was a lot of different career moves or artistic changes or, you know, and I can see it with, you know, Geminis I know in my life. I see how they started out in one job or in one relationship and kind of moved into the next and, you know, over and over again. And I think there are some Geminis that hold on to guilt because of that, but I'm like, no, like you, if you're a Gemini, you do a reading with me, I will champion you. I will encourage you to keep going, to keep evolving, to honor change, because you are the ones that teach us that more than anybody else. And again, though, use discernment. Are you all over the place and just constantly be like, now I'm doing this, now I'm doing that, now I'm doing this, now I'm going here, now I'm going there, now I'm going to go get this certification, now I'm going to marry this person, now I'm going to move here? Or is it a, I'm stepping into this new phase. Now I feel complete with this phase time for the next one, right? And we kind of can get into a cadence with everything. So we need to, you know, honor the fact that change is, is part of who we are. And change is not something that we have to make excuses for, or justify or explain to anybody. And it's definitely not something to feel guilty about. Don't feel guilty for needing change. Feel empowered by the fact that you recognize that you did. Don't feel guilty for needing to change. Be empowered by the fact that you recognize that you did. It's really important. It's really important because that is the fuel that will help you. If you are fueling your changes by fear and guilt, and like maybe you're doing something wrong, or you're worried about what people will think, then the change will be a little bit more rocky. I know that that was some of the fuel that I used earlier this year, I was worried that I was coming off as irresponsible, that I was coming off as someone that didn't want to show up for community. I felt like maybe I looked reckless or unsafe. And you better believe when you're on a road trip and that's your fuel, things will get bumpy. And so I had to really look at where that was coming from. And, you know, and and this past retrograde period really showed that to me. Like, who do you want to be, Danielle Mercurio? How do you want to show up? Well, I know that. That part's easy. But then we start to look at, well, what's going on that's not allowing it to? And that's really what the breakdown was for me. What am I still looking at? And, and defending myself from or, or trying to shield myself from that really is counterintuitive and counterproductive, you know, and our body takes that on as well. Sometimes our bodies just want us to rest. They don't want us to work harder. They don't want us to figure something out. They don't want us to be inspired. They just want us to rest. And we have to honor that too. You know, we have to honor the fact that part of change is also taking rest before the change can ensue. Before I could really step into some of my goals, I had to step out of everything. 
and give myself that permission. And for me, July is usually that month right before my birthday. Uh, I always find that cancer season is kind of my time to really unwind the shadows. And this year, very much so. I think I dodged it a little bit last year because there were some things I just, I wasn't ready to go there. And I, and to be completely honest, I didn't feel safe in my environment to go there. I didn't feel comfortable in my home. And so to go to some of those places, I, I wasn't ready to be vulnerable there. I was really just in survival mode, if I'm being completely honest with you. Um, I was sick very often. Like I couldn't tell you a week where I felt 100% good and normal. My hair was falling out. Um, it was getting really bad. So I, I understand my need to leave. And then the next phase of that leaving was being shown very clearly all the stuff. And then it really came to a head last month. But I will say I've been healing so much over these past six months. My hair is not hasn't been falling out since um, May. So we're at, oh my God, we're at three months now of no more hair falling out. And it's like growing and it feels amazing. My uh, digestion is getting better. It still has its moments. It definitely got offset when I was in... Uh, I was in Vail and that altitude woo, was really hard on my system. But um, again, it was almost like I took a knee and I was in a space where I was able to just be in the discomfort of everything and be shown even more of what I needed to see. And I felt safe there to do it. Um, but, you know, we'll see kind of what, what happens from here. But I just know that by making the changes, by being in the mess, things are better. And, and they're better because of my willingness to just be like, I got to take care of myself. I've got to surrender and I've got to trust. I've got to listen to what my guides have been telling me. I need to trust the, the same insight I would give to someone else. Right. I, I like would almost step back sometimes and listen to the ways that messages would come through me as I show up for other people in, in coaching sessions and in their readings and through the cosmic channel, my membership. And I'm like, this is like, that's truth coming through you. And you have a choice if you want to step up into that truth along with it. Do you want to just be the vessel or do you want to embody it? And now, you know, gearing up for a couple days before my birthday, if you're listening in real time, my birthday is technically August 9th, but my solar return when the sun comes back around to the same degree it was in when you were born is on 8 8. 8 8 is a really special day for me. It's, um, you know, we're honoring this really amazing portal where we're able to step up into more strength, more courage, more abundance, more of our leadership. And this year we're going to have it with a new moon. Um, and I was born on a new moon. So it just is, it feels like I'm allowing all these changes to happen and just witness it. And I'm not worried about what the changes will do. I'm not worried that the changes will hurt me. I'm not worried that the changes won't work out. You know, we're allowed to believe in the changes that we want. We don't have to sit around and wait for the other shoe to drop. We don't have to say we're making a change and then wait for it to all fall apart. And even though I had messes happen with my changes, I got it. I was like, it makes sense. I understand. And it was worth it in the end for me to get to a place where I could feel more whole, more clear, more complete. Um, you know, and, and I, I, again, I share this for you so that you can be in a space if you're needing to make a change, if you're looking for things to be different. Make the change and then be open to any resistance or anything that comes up that needed to be shown to you as part of the change. And further, take ownership of those changes. Remember, you do not have to justify what you're doing. You do not have to explain yourself to anybody. You don't. And the right people in your life will understand and they will cheer you on. The right people in my life never had a doubt about what I was doing. They didn't question me at all. They didn't ever make me feel like what I was doing was irresponsible or any of the other ideas that I had in my head. They just supported me and held space for me. And when you make changes and people aren't able to do that for you, it's very telling. 
It's been very telling for me this last year of who can't hold space for me, who doesn't understand, who are the people that, you know, didn't recognize that like there are some times where I just really needed a lot of space. Being on the road and traveling by yourself, it's amazing. It's a lot of work. And there are times where I can't just talk on the phone or I can't just text with someone. Like I just, you know, am spent, right? And I have to prioritize my energy. So when you're making any kind of changes, don't be afraid to prioritize your energy. Don't be afraid to do what you need to do to get this freaking change done. Change is part of our evolution. It is part of your journey. Think about how many times you've changed physically. Think about how many times you've changed your interests. You ever watched a show and then you just kind of stopped watching it? You started watching something else? Was there ever a food that you really loved and you ate all the time and then you stopped? Did you force yourself to keep eating something because you're like, well, I used to love eating this. I used to eat this all the time. I used to always have it for breakfast. So I should keep having it for breakfast. Or do you change? I used to eat oatmeal every single day, every single day. And then I just stopped one day. I eat it every now and then now. And I just stopped. I was like, I don't really want to eat oatmeal every day. But what if I said, no, oatmeal is your comfort zone. Oatmeal is what you said you like. Everyone knows that you eat oatmeal. Quaker Oats is going to come after you. It sounds silly, right? Well, same with your stuff. I don't care if it's a job, a relationship, a house, a health decision, oh, you know, a side project you're working on, whatever it may be, don't feel like you're doing something wrong if you need to go in a different direction, because very likely you're doing something so right that will lead you exactly to where you want to be. So welcome back to the Danielle Mercurio show. I'm so glad you're here. I'm not changing it. I'm just not. I, you know, if I do, I'll let you know. (laughs) And I know that you'll be here for it. I loved my so-called spiritual life. I hope that you loved, you know, it too for what it was. Um, But I'm just happy to come back around full circle to me. I love you so much. Thank you for listening and more to come.